we just got back uh, last weekend from our senior high mission trip. We had 50 students that attended that trip um, along with... Um, Oh, gosh, I lost track. Along with 12 adults, um, a couple weeks before that, we had 20 middle school kids and, uh, and five adults that went on that. If you're doing your math, that's 87 people that, uh, from our church that served in, uh, in, in mission trips. Um, one of the really cool things about our senior high trip was along with Faith Westwood, there were also two other churches from Omaha that were up in Sturgis with us. Um, I was doing a little bit of math a minute ago, and, uh, and here's what it comes out to. Uh, just looking at... Um, the youth from Faith Westwood that went on, on these two trips, uh, we had 87 students and adults. Each of them were working six hours a day for, for volunteering by building wheelchair ramps, decks, painting houses. Um, I think, I don't know if anybody was doing drywall or roofing. Um, and, uh, but at the end of the day, if you're looking at 87 people times six hours a day for five days straight, that means that teenagers from our church in one week each combined for a total of 2,600 plus hours of service for themselves to others and, and, and in service to God. And, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you, but I think that that's pretty impressive. Um, as we um, are in this sermon series and talking about influence, as we're talking about the way that that we connect to others. Um, our, our theme for camp was connect, and, and one of the ways that we connect is by, by making a difference in the lives of other people. The, the, the uh, memory verse and the, the theme verse for our mission trips this summer was, came, comes from John 15, verse 5. And in it, Jesus says, Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And um, what I... What I try to remind our kids about during the week at, 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 on our mission trips was that um, if you look at, for those of you that like grapes, if you look at a, at a vine and you, and you pick up grapes at the store, when, when you grab the top of that vine, the grapes that fall off the easiest are the ones that are the furthest away from the stem. And that's because the closer they are to the stem, the healthier they are. They're bigger, they're juicier, and they actually are harder to pull off of their stems than, than the ones all the way at the end. And that's because they're closest to the vine. And in this passage from John chapter 15, this is what Jesus is saying is, when you remain in me, you're going to be healthy, you're going to be strong. And at the end of the day, um, but because of you remaining in me and me remaining in you, Jesus is saying, you are going to produce fruit. You're going to be an influence on other people. You are going to make a difference in the lives of other people. And um, I have to say, after four years of, of serving at Faith Westwood and at the Water's Edge, I have learned that our students influence me probably just as much as I influence them, sometimes even more. And I wanted to share um, about, about some of those experiences. I've got a couple of students that I want to invite to come up. And, um, but first off, I want to uh, share about how one student particu in particular influenced me. And so, Natalie, are you on the edge this time? No, you're going to have to ma make your way out through a couple of other students. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Natalie as she, uh, as she comes up. Natalie Zook, a couple of years ago, um, started coming, in, coming into the youth group. She's going to be in eighth grade this fall. And as she came in as a sixth grader, I tried so hard to be nice to Natalie and to, uh, and to make her feel like a part of the youth group. And just about every single time I said, hi, Natalie, I just got this glaring stare without any words from Natalie. And um, somehow after about six months, she started Three, she says three months, I say six months, you know, tomato, tomato, whatever it is. But about Christmas time, she finally started talking to me, and, and, she, and, and it started out with just high chat. And over the last two years, um, Natalie and I have gotten to know each other a little bit. We, we razz each other, we give each other a hard time, and I consider Natalie one of the toughest girls, even tougher than most of the guys that I know. Um, and Natalie went on our mission trip last year to Minneapolis and, and, and came off of that mission trip saying, I'm, I'm absolutely going again next year, was one of our, the first kids to sign up and say she was going. And uh, this year, as um, youth group was wrapping up towards the end of the school year, about the, week, the second to last week, Natalie comes walking in or actually hobbling in with a crutch to, uh, to ignite on a Wednesday night. And, and I'm sitting here like, what did you do now? Um, Natalie likes to get hurt. She's a, a softball player, a volleyball player, and soccer too? No. Just not volleyball anymore? 
soccer and basketball, softball, I, I don't know, whatever you do. Um, we can tell we know each other really well by now, right? Um, Natalie comes walking in, she's got crutches on, she's got a, a brace on, and I'm like, Natalie, what did you do now? And, and she's like, I think I blew out my knee. I don't know if I can go on the mission trip, but I really want to go on the mission trip. What do I got to do? And I, I just looked at her, and I talked to her. Her mom was right there, and I said, you know what? Here's the deal, Natalie. If you want to go on this mission trip, we're going to find a way for you to go on this mission trip. Because if you're willing to go with your knee the way it is, then you have every right to be there, and you need to be there. And, and that's where, you, where God wants you to be. Natalie went to the doctor, found out your knee was blown out, right? ACL was completely blown out which was actually a good thing because then they could actually postpone the surgery if you know anything about injuries um, like that. Um, if it's completely blown, then the, the pain is actually a little bit less. And so we threw Natalie in a van and then we put her um, in a, a whitewater raft and we went down a river, uh, bouncing all the way down. She grinned and bared through it and everything was absolutely wonderful until we got to the church in Denver. And um, I, I'm gonna ask Natalie just a few questions. Um, uh, and, and I'm going I'm to have you just kind of tell us a little bit about your experience. Are you ready for this? Natalie didn't know I was doing this until like the first service. And now I'm even putting her on the spot a little <laughs> bit more. Natalie, um, why did you want to go on the mission trip? Um, I had a really good time last year and I got closer to God. And I felt like I really made a difference in people's lives and I wanted to go again. And, and then you blew out your knee and yeah. we made it possible for you to go. And then you get to the camp, right? Yeah. And what happens? Um, there is a group of girls, and actually guys too, and they were just kind of saying stuff like, why is she even here? She, I, mean, I had a crutch then, I had a brace on. And why is she here? How can she do anything when she's on in this condition? She can't really do anything to help anybody or do anything. And I shouldn't really be here is what they told me. So you get to camp, and there's a bunch of other kids telling you you're not even supposed to be there. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Horrible. I mean, your first two days were pretty rough, huh? What changed? Um, the talk that night was about how we shouldn't let people get to us and what they say about us. We shouldn't, like, have it affect us at all and how we live our lives. And then Chad came and talked to me later that night after the, um, our lesson, and he said that if I was here this week, it was for a reason, and it was that God wanted me to be here, and that he was just really proud that I was here. Thanks, Natalie. Um, Natalie went on a mission trip injured. She, uh, she served because that's where she felt God needed her to be. And, and as far as I'm concerned, when I think about people that influence me, Natalie's one of those kids. She, uh, she, she toughed out through an injury. She toughed out through other people talking behind her back. And she toughed it out knowing that this was the right place for her to be. Um, it's, it's rare for me to see um, students do that. And then I come here and I see students in every shape and form serving God through blown out knees, through broken arms, Peyton, um, through, um, through, through things going on back home that, that you know, are hard to, to, to make it possible to focus. And, and what I want to say is, is for every single kid of ours who goes on these mission trips, for every adult who goes, they influence me because of the things that they do and because of the service that they're giving and that because that's where God wants them to be right then and there. So Natalie, thank you so much for being an influence on my life this, uh, this summer and uh, for, for, for being willing to, to put aside the, only th the things going on in your life so that you can be an influence in others. So, I want to invite um, two, a couple more of our students to come up, and I'm going to have you guys just both come up now. Um, uh, Jordan Ellis and um, Nate Fowler are, are both graduating seniors, and, and uh, as I said at the first service, Jordan is, um, our, I, I, I really believe that he's probably been over the last four years, maybe even longer, the most consistent student at, um, at, at uh, Chi Alpha and our senior high youth group. Uh, I, I can think of one time that he missed, and I think that was because of the, uh, a, the AFC, AFC championship this year. He decided he needed to be at home to watch and cheer on the Steelers. Um, Outside of that, I can think of very, very, very few times that he's missed our youth group. And, and so, in a way, Jordan's been a big influence because of the example that he's set. And I want him to share about just his experience in being a part of our mission trips over the last several years. Yeah. 
Hi, my name is Jordan. I've been on seven mission trips with the Faith Worthwood Youth. And the theme of this year's mission trip was connect. And over the last seven years, I've done a lot of connecting. These mission trips have allowed me to connect with other Christians across the nation, residents with amazing stories who needed our help, but also with the members of our youth group, the congregation of this church, but most importantly with God. During the year leading up to this trip, it was great connecting with the people in our church through worship and leading, uh, during our fun youth group fundraisers. During the trip, I connected with God through my resident, Pat. She raised uh, four teenage boys on her own with like $350 a month. She told us her story on the first day at the site during her crew devotions. Uh, my crew had 17 people in it, which was one of the largest crews at the site this year. And she wanted to connect with all of us by learning our names and hearing our stories. Needless to say, devotions that took a long time that day. Going along with the sermon today, I've been influenced by uh, many different things. The main thing influenced me was the time that I get to spend with other Christians who think like me and have similar ideas and thoughts. There are also many people uh, in this state who need our help and helping the residents in more ways than one. I enjoy cleaning up their houses or building ramps or porches so they can get out of their houses. But along with building, helping them, uh, also helping them renew their faith or coming to God for the first time is one of the most rewarding things I've done on a mission trip. Not only have I been influenced, have I influenced, but I've also been influenced. And I've influenced others like Cody and Nate to start coming to youth group because I invited them and kept inviting them and they eventually came. Now they lead worship and are active members in the youth group and middle school youth groups. I have another friend who moved out to Colorado, but he also made time to come on mission trips with us. These last seven years have allowed me to meet people I never would have met and come closer to them by helping out our residents and having something in common. It also meant growing closer to God in more ways than one. It has encouraged me to continue helping other people here at home, even if it's in smaller ways. Nate Fowler is another one of our seniors, and, and uh, Nate is a started out just as a guest of Jordan's and, and uh, has been a part now. I think he said that this is his fifth mission trip this year, and so I want to invite Nate to, to share a little bit about what his experiences have been like um, coming from both another church and um, being an, uh, just a friend of somebody here. Right, so uh, Jordan and I kind of been friends since sixth grade, and I thought it was great when he invited me to his church. Uh, I'm used to a smaller church, non-denominational, just kind of whatever, and it was a nice change. It was something new. I was comfortable because I knew people from school that were still at the church, and I got to meet new awesome people in the youth group. Um, and before I'd come to Faith Westwood, I had just kind of been leading, wor or leading worship and playing drums at my church. And uh, when I got here, I got connected. I met Chad. I started playing for the middle school youth group. I ended up going on a middle school retreat. And uh, I just had a lot of fun with music, and so that's, that's my way of connecting to God. And so uh, Jordan kind of brought me into that. Uh, me and my other friend Cody, like we said, um, just uh, leading worship, playing together. You know, Jordan brought us all into that, so I, I have to thank Jordan, and I have to thank the youth group and the church and uh, God mostly. So I just want to thank everybody, and it's been a life-changing experience, and I continue to come back. Well, guys, I want to ask you guys just a couple of questions, and, and part of this goes with our, our idea of influence. You see, like, Jordan invited Nate, and, uh, and together they, they, they brought Cody into the fold of our youth group. And, 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 you know, I see this a lot with a lot of our kids um, uh, that, that invite their friends and continue to bring their friends. But I want to ask you, um, Jordan, how do you see yourself, you know, before, I, I don't know, before the, the, maybe this week, have you ever really thought of yourself as an influencer over your friends? Um, not really. They just kind of go along with stuff sometimes. So do you think that to be an influencer, you have to be really intentional about being an influencer? No, you don't. No, you don't. All right. I'm going to ask you, why is that? Um, well, I mean, kind of like leading by example, you don't you have to like, be like, hey, Nate, come to youth group. You just like, you know, ask him to go and then he wanted to go. So okay. it's, it's that easy. Nate, how have you seen Jordan as an influencer in your life? Well, uh, for the first for the first time I met him in percussion, you know, like kind of jamming out. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to be in music at all in sixth grade. I tried out percussion, and then seeing like me and him got a great friendship going, and how he liked the music, and that was one of the things that kept me in band, and I'm really glad it did. And uh, that kind of just grew from there. So even like unintentional, he likes music. You know, people will follow him and role model type style. So. So really, like. Being an influencer, it doesn't even have to be like, oh, you have to come to church first. It can just start with a basic friendship, a basic relationship out of 
something as simple as, or maybe not so as simple as percussion, right? Yeah. Nate, how has Jordan's influence on you helped you to influence others? Well, Jordan brought me on uh, my first mission trip, and I had a great time. So I ended up inviting my mom on the next mission trip because, you know, we're kind of close. So <laughs> uh, I wanted her to experience what I had had the opportunity to experience. And so I brought her on the second mission trip. She made awesome friends with all the girls in the youth group. They love her. Call her Mama T because she's Mother Teresa. And, uh, you know, it was just it was a great time. And so, um, you know, bringing my mom on the – and then this last – this last mission trip, I brought my sophomore brother, little brother, on the, the mission trip, not a freshman. So uh, he had a great time. He's just planning on coming back. And my older brother's uh, looking into it because we come home and we're telling great stories about how we're closer to God and how we had a great time. And so it's really grown from there. Cool. Um, I want to ask you guys, of, of seven mission trips and of five mission trips, um, what's your best memory? <laughs> um, well, one of my favorite memories um, didn't really have to do with the camp, but it was on the way home, and we had an all-guys van, and it was me, Nate, Cody, and my other friend, Marcus, all in the back seat of this 15-passenger van, so it was, it was pretty crowded with all guys, and I don't even know why I like this so much, because they just ended up <laughs> beating me up like the entire van did, but it, it was all like good fun. I just remember that one for some reason. Yeah, obviously the van rides are awesome. They get you, uh, they kind of like force you, I know that sounds bad, but it forces you to get to know new people in the youth group and you end up enjoying it. And um, like this last mission trip, I never really talked to other people in my van until, you know, we're on the road and we have 8, 10, 15, however, it's, you know, it extends, you know, you really know how long it's going to take. But you get to know them. And so uh, van rides are awesome. One of my favorite things was whitewater rafting. And uh, in West Virginia, that was, that was crazy. I loved it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you know, um, we do all kinds of stuff on our mission trips. We, uh, we do get to have a lot of fun. Um, I look back at this year, and I see us um, uh, just this year, um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the middle school kids did whitewater rafting. We did some dining out in Denver. The high school kids, um, I, I forgot at the first service, um, we did Oli's. Uh, I'm going to try and do this in order. Oli's, Carhenge. Um, the, uh, we <laughs> that was their favorite stop, you can tell. Um, we did uh, worship and, and walking around at Mount Rushmore on a Sunday morning. We did uh, Custer State Park, Devil's Tower, um, uh, Sylvan Lake. What did I miss? Wall Drug, the Badlands. Um, we 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 stopped briefly at Crazy Horse. We saw buffalo. We did all, fed donkeys. We we had an, an amazing time doing fun stuff and connecting with each other. But at the same time, we saw sixty-two people serving on um, each serving on one of 67 teams on the high school trip um, 25 of us serving on I think about 19 different teams on the middle school trip and, and making a difference in the lives of of those that we served whether it was helping um, uh, disabled children or um, ride horses or working with a, a free children's clinic whether it was building a wheelchair ramp or a deck or, or painting somebody's house these kids they went out and they made a difference they influenced individually those around them and those that they served. And that's what we're really talking about today. How do we influence the world around us? It doesn't have to be specifically intentional in the way that, of going out on a mission trip, although that's a phenomenal way to do it, but it can be as simple as inviting a friend or making a friendship that turns into a relationship where you build and you, you eventually bring somebody into the fold. We had great views and we had great activities on our trip. The biggest focus, though, for us was that we were going out and that we were serving others in the name of Jesus Christ, that we were making a difference. We saw emotional breakthroughs. We saw spiritual breakthroughs and, and kids uh, beginning to understand more and more about what it is that Christ wants from them in a relationship. And at the end of the day, we saw changed lives, both in our youth and in those that we served. So now what I want to do is I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to you as a congregation because without your prayers, without your support, our trips aren't possible. 
the average kid um, actually ends up fundraising 80% of the cost of their trip through activities that they do and through gifts from this church. And I think as we, we figured it out at the beginning of the service, that works out for our church. That works out to total cost for all of our students and all of our adults to go on a mission trip um, this year was right around $60,000 between the two trips. That's a huge investment that our church makes in going out into the world, along with 2,600 hours of community service. But that's all possible because of your help, your prayers, and your generosity. So I want to thank you guys real quick. Now, I also need to recognize a few other people, and, and these are people that gave of their time, gave of their energy, took time and vacation away from work, and those are our adult leaders. You have no idea what they put up with on a mission trip, and I'm really not kidding. Um, and, and if you'd ever like to find out, we would welcome you to, uh, to ask us a, about going, but if you're one of the adult leaders um, that went on the mission trip this year, would you guys stand up, because you guys deserve a huge amount of applause. They're, they're driving vans while kids are trying to do handstands in the back. They're, the, while they're dancing, the vans will be going down the road, and somebody will, it's windy outside, but their van is the only one going like this because the kids are dancing inside. You get, it is a joy to be in my position. Uh, it is a joy to watch what happens to these kids. And so lastly, I want to thank you guys as, as youth. You influence me. You influence me by your selflessness, you influence me by your actions, and you influence me by your deeds. And I hope and pray as a church that they influence you as well. So can we give them a round of applause for giving of their summer? I'm going to uh, close this in prayer.